I created this amazing AI app which can take pictures of plants and detect which type of plant it is. Now you must be wondering how did I do that and I have the answer to that. I used Cursor AI which is an amazing AI code editor. You can download this on your machine and this can change your coding life. Now if you're new to coding or you don't have any coding skills, it's completely alright because Cursor AI can do everything for you. All you have to do is just type in some prompts and you can just apply all the changes by clicking on the apply button and accept those changes and you're gonna see how simple it is in the video. And the second thing that I used is the OpenAI's Vision API. So I used the OpenAI's API to actually analyze the photo. And one more thing that you're gonna need is ExpoGo. This is an application to which you can actually view your app on your mobile phone, whether it's Android or iOS. And that was literally all it took me to actually build this amazing application. And I'm really excited to show you guys how to do it. So let's dive right in. Hi, and welcome back to Skill Curb. This is your host, Shamriz, and we're finally getting to the fun part of building this amazing application. So I'm gonna start with actually asking it to give me a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up a React Native app because I wanna create a mobile app that can detect any plant using a picture and a vision API. So I'm gonna go and start with really basic here and I'm gonna ask it to give me a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up an app. So I'm gonna say, give me a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up a React Native Expo application for my plant detection app. So here you go. You get the first step, you have to set up an Expo CLI, which is to install Expo CLI globally on your machine. I have that done already because I've been developing for quite a while now. But in this video, we're going to do everything using AI. So I'm going to just skip this step. You can do that. I'm going to go with the step number two here, which is to create a new Expo plant detection app. So let's just copy this and let's paste that right inside your terminal and hit enter. Now, what this would do is it would create a new Expo application. And all you have to say is just Y and hit enter. There you go. So it starts installing all the dependencies and everything that you need inside your app, the whole structure. And you can see that by clicking here. As you can see, we have the app folder, assets, components, constants, hooks, and scripts. You might not know what are these folders for, but they're quite essential in the structure of any application out there. But for now, I'm not going to talk about these because everything's going to be done by AI. And there you go. Once your app is installed, what you need to do is you need to change directory to the app folder, which is right here. You can just copy this command and just paste that right there. There you go. So now you're inside the app directory. Let me clear this out a bit. And the next step is going to be installing essential dependencies that we're gonna need in this application, like the Expo camera or the image picker. So I'm just gonna go and actually run these by clicking here. There you go. This is why I love Cursor AI. You can pretty much do everything using Cursor AI. You can apply changes, save them, run commands in terminal with just one click. I'm amazed at how good this is. And there you go. Once it's done installing all the essential dependencies, the next step is to actually create this folder structures. So you're going to need to have a source folder or an SRC folder in which you're going to have the components, the screens, the services and utils. And then you're going to have an assets folder, which we already have here. We're going to have an app.js which we don't have so let's create that and we're going to have a packet.json so yep uh, we can do that so first things first we need to actually apply this right here and it will create an app.js right away as you can see and accept there you go let's save that the next thing we're going to need is to create a home screen so for that i'm just going to go and follow this folder structure here so inside my plant detection app folder what i need to do is create an src folder so let's do that i'm going to create an src here and the next thing we want is to create more folders inside src so i'm going to go with components here then the next one is going to be about screens so let's click here let's create a new folder it's going to be screens the next one is going to be services and then utils so i'm going to create a couple of more folders here services util once you have all of that set up what you can do is you can start applying changes here so we need a home screen dot json now this is going to be a screen so i want it to be present inside the screens here right there let's apply that there you go let's accept everything and let's save next thing we're going to want is we're going to have to run the application so how to do that you just have to see npx expo start or you can just click run here and it will do that but before that 
there are some additional setup tips that I want to talk about. So you can add these plugins to your app.json because this is what you're going to need. You're going to need camera permission from your device. So what I would recommend is you just copy this part. And then what you need to do is you need to go to the app.json file here and scroll down all the way to plugins. And once you're here inside the plugins, you can just paste that right here. Let's add a comma. So now we have the Expo camera permissions. Cool. Let's close this. And if you scroll down now, you can create an ENV file in which you can set up your Git. But I think this is not important. Something like this, an experimental app that we are creating. I'm not going to publish this on my Git right now, but I will do that later on on the Skill Cubs GitHub page. But for now, I'm just going to go and keep it as simple as possible. So everything is set up now let's actually go and view how our app is going to look like so i have visor right here which is going to share my mobile phone screen so let's go and check out the results now this is really basic i know but this is how your app is going to look for starters and if i click on take photo let me see if the camera works it does not let me fix that so now what we need to do is we need to make sure that the take photo actually has some functionality behind it so that we can actually open up our camera and take pictures of plants. And we need to figure out how we can use the vision model of OpenAI to actually detect these plants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask it to create a functionality behind the take photo. So I'm going to say I want you to make sure that when we click the take photo button, it should open up the device camera and take a picture. You can use the image picker library. Now, this is a library that I have experience with and it works completely fine when you want to use your camera. So what you need to do is you need to install the Expo image picker. I think we did install this earlier, but still let's go and open up our terminal as it is in the server mode. I'm going to create a next terminal here. Let's split that. And here I'm going to actually run the script. There you go. And the next thing we're going to want here is we need to apply the updated code. I'm going to apply that and it's going to change a lot of things here. Except there you go. There is one small error here. Let me see here. We can fix that using AI. There you go. Supply these changes. You can fix bugs within clicks using cursor AI. So now that we have this, let's see how the app looks and also we need to check if the camera functionality works or not right so using visor i can display my ios device here and as you can see that we still have the same ui but now if i click on take photo i can give it permissions for using my camera so let's allow this and there you go as you can see my camera is completely working i can take pictures like that and i can retake pictures or use that so i'm gonna retake it or use it so let's retake one more and i'm gonna take a new picture here there you go now i can use this picture and as you can see the picture pops up above the take photo button now we need to use this image or a potential plant image detect the type of plant in the image so the next step is to actually create the backend and the functionality of analyzing this image so first things first i want to actually pass on this image to the next portion or the next module of code so i need to have a submit button so i'm gonna go and say now i want you to submit this image to the image detection module of the code that you will write later in which we will use OpenAI api to detect the type of plant so let's go with that but before that i want to make sure that it creates a submit button so i added this line here that create a submit button let's go and hit enter so there you go you have the whole code let's just apply it and accept now if you scroll down it's going to explain everything that it added so in this update it added a submit button okay it includes loading state cool prepares placeholders for analysis results amazing and in the next step what we're going to do is we're going to have to set up environmental variables for openai api key and create actual api integration with openai vision api so let's go with this code and let's see how it actually performs so back here so back here inside our app let's click on take photo there you go we have to take a picture let me turn off the flash here let's go and take a picture there you go let's use this photo and now we have this analyze plant button here so if I click here, it should actually submit the data. So as you can see here in the terminal, it's actually analyzing the image, it's sending the image, which is right here in on this address to the API. Now we're almost done with this app. What we need to do is just set up an API. So I'm just going to go and do that. So I'm just going to go and say proceed with next steps that you suggested because it already suggested these steps right here. So let's go and hit enter. And 
The best part about Cursor is that it actually is really amazing about remembering all the context of your application. Like it knows what's happening in this file, what's happening in the whole project. So that's really amazing about Cursor. I love it. Uh, so first things first, we need to install this new thing, which is the OpenAI React Native dot env and there you go we have that installed next step is to create an env file so what i need to do is i need to create an env file in the root so dot env this is going to be the environmental variable file that we usually use just gonna go and copy this let's paste that right there instead of this i'm gonna paste my openai's api key now once you have your openai api key set up what you need to do is you need to have some updates to the babel.config.js file all you have to do is just click apply and it would do all these changes right let's accept that let's save that now the next step is to update the main component so let's go and apply these changes accept these and we have a bug here so we can solve that it's not a big issue we have cursor ai with us it took me around 10 minutes to solve this env bug it was really confusing because ai is not perfect and you might face some challenges but good for me that i know development there was this bug about .env. So if you're using React Native .env and you're using Expo, they just don't go well together and you are just going to mess up your application. So what I did is I created a constant file here through which I actually exported my API key, as you can see right here. And what I did is I actually went on and exported that inside my main file here and then use that right here in the initialization. So there you go. Now, after doing all of this, I really want to check out the results. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my visor here. As you can see, this is my app. It's going to be really plain and simple right now, but I think what matters is how good it actually functions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture, but I'm going to take the picture of anything from web because I don't have any plant right here in my office desk. So I found this image on this website and I want to take a picture of this image. So let me open up my camera. And as you can see, we're going to take the picture of this plant. There you go. And then we're going to use this photo and then let's click on analyze plant. Now it might take a few seconds to one minute for this analysis. So there you go. The results are out. I don't know if you guys can read this, but I will read this out for you. This plant is an aloe vera. This is the first sentence of this summary that it pulled out. And this is really amazing, which means that our app is working completely fine. Let's just close this. But I'm not someone that can be satisfied with only one example. So I have pulled out another plant image here, which is from Better Homes and Gardens. And this one is going to be a spider plant. So let's go and take a picture of this. I'm going to go and take the picture and I'm going to go and take photo. Let's go and take a picture. There you go. Let's use this photo and let's click on analyze plant. If it returns the accurate result this time, this means that our app is working completely fine and we can actually deploy this app on any platform and earn money through it. And there you go, the results are out and I must say I'm really amazed the results are quite accurate. So I'm going to read this out for you. This plant is a spider plant. The next part is the scientific name of this plant, which is quite hard to pronounce. So I'm going to just drop that. And the next line says, it is known for its long arching leaves, which are typically green with white stripes. So yeah, this is giving us a complete summary of the plant and what actually is this plant. And I'm really in love with this app that we just created. Although the design is way too simple and we can actually work on the design later on in the next phase. But for now, I think this is more than enough. The functionality is up to the mark. We can take pictures of any plant and analyze that. And we built this whole thing from scratch within minutes. I mean, all I did was type in some really simple prompts inside Cursor AI and it did all the code for us. It gave us a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up everything for us. So with that said, I won't wrap this video up. But the point of this video was to show you guys how you can build anything, any app using AI from scratch, even if you don't know any coding. And I hope this video was helpful. If you found this video insightful, hit the like button. Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Ring that notification bell to never miss out on our daily updates. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video. Till then, stay curious and keep exploring.